This imposing house overlooking the sea is right in the centre of Juneau Beach, the Canadian landing zone on D-Day. It's a really special place with many stories waiting to be retold. The first building to be liberated on D-Day was the Gondre Cafe beside Pegasus Bridge, but this one is the first to be liberated from the sea. The Queen's own rifles of Canada did the job. There are so many stories coming out of D-Day, June the 6th, 1944. This is the story about a very special house. The house was built in 1928 as a summer vacation home for the owner of a large department store in Paris. But several years later, it was sold to Edmund Hoffer and it remains in his family to this day. By 1940, France was under German occupation and pretty much all the houses round here were torn down to make way for concrete, barbed wire and observation platforms to scan the English Channel. No one really knows why the house survived the cull, but it was probably because a German officer took a liking to it. His job was to run the gun that was on the beach that was part of the so-called Atlantic Wall, Hitler's grand plan to protect occupied Europe from a seaborne invasion. Millions of conscripted workers from already occupied nations were deployed in its construction. The Atlantic Wall ran for 2,800 miles from Norway to the Spanish border. 15,000 gun batteries and machine gun nests, rarely more than 100 yards apart, were manned by 300,000 men. It took three years to build and was breached in three hours on D-Day. Erwin Rommel, the celebrated German officer and veteran of several successful military campaigns, had been given the responsibility of defending the Atlantic Wall. In the weeks leading up to D-Day, he had told Hitler that if an Allied invasion took place here on the beaches of Normandy that could not be repelled back into the sea, Germany would lose the war very prophetic words indeed by a respected and decorated soldier with very sharp instincts. The occupying forces that marched into that house and thousands of others like it were rightly despised for what they were doing. Families were forcibly evicted and after war had taken its toll, many of them never got to return. The Nazi attempt to overthrow Europe and the world is condemned by history. But in each situation, in each battle, the individual stories are there to be told. After the war, the house was returned to the Hoffer family in a pretty desperate state, to be honest. But then slowly, the Canadian veterans started to revisit because the place represented such a huge part of their memories of the day when the freedom of the world rested on their young shoulders. The stories of what happened here on that day started to emerge. 200 of the men had taken a bullet in the opening moments of the invasion from a machine gun that was positioned in the front window of the house. Their names are now written on a plaque just up there. The house still has bullet marks on the inside and the outside that reveal the scars of war. The Hoffer family welcomed the veterans to the house and made it a place of honour and memorial to the Canadian soldiers who fought to free it from occupation. The mementos include original photographs, an armband that was left behind by a German soldier and a French bloodstained banknote that was given to a Canadian soldier from a German in exchange for sparing his life. Ernie Cowles, who had thrown a hand grenade into the basement of the house where the Germans were hiding, came back here on the 60th anniversary and he spoke to Hervé Hoffer and he said to him, I was the one who threw the hand grenade. I'm so sorry for the damage I caused to your house. 
please just send me the bill. Hoffa replied, don't worry, the cost has already been paid. What Hervé meant is that the men who fought and died here paid with their lives the cost for the freedom that we so often enjoy and even take for granted. I thank God for them every day and I feel such a responsibility to keep telling their story. They really did give their todays for our tomorrows. There's something immensely powerful about one person sacrificing their life for another. And it's probably the reason why events like Remembrance Sunday and Armistice commemorations are so awesome and even spiritual. Thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. For more videos in this series, see the comments and the description for the links. And if you wanna hear more from me, you know what to do. See you next time.